Hey guys, what's up? I'm here to give you guys a recap on the new episode of Dr. Stone Season 2, which is on Episode 9, or Dr. Stone Stone Wars on Episode 9, or the total number of episodes of Dr. Stone, which is on Episode 33. Now, this episode right here, to be honest with you, I've been trying to do my fair share of research on this thing, and I had to be sure, like, is this even possible? Because when it comes to science, you science you know sometimes it could be fictional sometimes it could be real well sometimes when it comes to certain science it's always has its, has its realistic side but yeah if anything else let's just get this started all i can really tell you throughout the action scenes is that like um kohaku and the others along with like ishigami uh, along with ishigami village that could are that are able to fight they pretty much are doing everything they can to hold off sukasa and hyoga because we all know those two we see we now we see them in action they are Pretty much almost an unstoppable force of nature that you can't really take on by yourself, you know? It's not it's not a joke. Hell, it's not hell, it's not something that you're able to like um able to handle this at all. I mean, you're delaying the the inevitable, but buying if you are able to buy time for someone else to do something else, then you could ch you could turn the tide, you know? And we get to see the scene with like um Senku um, Gen and Chrome working together to try to make something, you know? And we see to it that, like, with the freaking revival fluid, we have to it that Gen is told by Senku to mix up snake poop and lizard poop to make, to make nitric acid plus urea, which makes not, eh, which makes urea nitrate, you know? If the uric acid and the feces isn't broken down, it's all coming down to luck. And we have to it that, like, um, that Senku needs some sulfuric acid. Without that, he may not be able to make what he needs to make, you know? And that really sucks. But we have two of the chromes like, no, we have some sulfuric acid. And some sulfuric acid came from the fake bomb cannon tank whatsoever. And I thought it was pretty hilarious because I go like, oh, wow. I saw that when the moment Chrome was trying to use his brain to figure something out, you know? And we see to it that... Um, that um senku decides to put in some glycerin soap that he has you know and that glycerin that he made with sukasa's soap while battle began with soap it's gonna end with soap and we're gonna make nitroglycerin you know and i decided to do some research about this nitroglycerin and guarantee <laughs> i've already seen some fair share of like information that it's no joke it's a really bad nasty explosive <laughs> and <clears throat> we get to see senku Ends up using nitroglycerin on the on the paper airplane that Gen was that Gen has has in store up. Throws it, kaboom! <laughs> I'm like mother, f <laughs> is that even real? Like I literally had to like um had to do my fair share of research about like um how deadly nitroglycerin if this if that's even possible. I mean we all know that when it comes to like um science, it's always like um. Very deadly, you know, etc. And honestly, after doing some research and looking into Wikipedia and all that, just saying the truth, etc. And looking at some images here and there. Yeah, that is no joke. I mean, I'm surprised all hell broken loose. Senku warned them not to breathe in it because this is literally a nasty explosive. It's death or die, you know. And he ends up demonstrating how deadly the nitroglycerin is and blows up in front of Sukasa and everyone else right now. And they go like, what the hell? Even Ukyo, even like um, Hyoga, he's like, oh my gosh, how magnificent. But, you know, when I see Hyoga's mouth and face, you know, it's very, very scary, honestly, dude. I mean, the guy has this menacing look of like, wow, man. It's no joke, man. It's not a freaking joke. I mean, when I look at Hyoga, I'm very, very concerned about his nature of being as well. Because, you know, when it comes to human beings being surprised by certain explosive or freaking like dangerous weapons whatsoever you could imagine how freaking ugly your mind could be corrupted in and we have to that senku and sukasa end up talking with each other and says okay let's talk this out there were a couple details here and there but senku's like let's negotiate your sister's still alive out there right and we have to it that Su we get to know the backstory of sukasa you know we know that Tsukasa had a little sister. It was hinted that it was hinted about that in season one a very long time ago, and <clears throat> in season one, yeah. All I know is is like um, Tsukasa had a little sister, and it was hinted about that in season one when he mentioned it to Senku at a beach one time and says we got purified 
this world and change it for the best, you know, that kind of thing. But we get to know more down the road of, like, Sukasa's like, um, backstory or why he became what he is today. We get to know that his sister was in the hospital, you know, and was very sick. It was hinted about that in season one. And we get to know that she might, she is, she is possibly brain dead and that she may not be able to come back alive. Which apparently is very s sad here and there. But Tsukasa wanted to do everything he can to save his little sister. That's why he trained so hard to become a fighter. And why he is so strong in peak human condition. You know? Why he's able to defeat, able to defeat so many fighters. Because he's, he's been training himself recklessly. Or should I say like greatly every, every single like um, time here and there. You know? And we see to it that like... Um, that Tsukasa has a good heart, you know? He wants to save his little sister here and there. And by that time, Senku offers that we might be able to revive her or save her. With this kind of revival fluid and everything else all considered, let's do that. I just want a truce, you know, afterwards. And I can see where Senku is coming from, you know? I'm pretty sure he doesn't want to fight and it's no way in hell that he wants to go go beyond that beyond the scope of, like, um stupid reasoning, you know? And... We have to it that like um, that Senku has all the ne has all the freaking like um, revival flow they needed right here. And although Senku does act act scummy and all shrewd up or messed up in the brain, like showing off here and there, he he has a good heart. Although Sukasa seemed to understand Senku and all that, he says, "How do I know you're gonna keep your word?" And Senku's like, "I'm a guy of science. I always keep my word." Isn't that enough? And we have to it that Tsukasa decides to like him. Okay, let's do it. It was a tough battle, you know. You can imagine how how terrifying this was in the very end to the to that point. And we have to it that like um, that we get to know about. We get to know more down the road about Tsukasa, you know. Eventually, Tsukasa and Senku does like um, do their best to work together and try to help each other out and. Senku, like he says, he's offering a chance to Tsukasa, let's offer a truce and negotiate. I can revive your sister and etc. And we see get to know we get to know about Tsukasa down the line, you know, as he as they continue to a certain location of where his, where his his little his little sister might be at. And we get to know um we get to know more down the road of asking him, why did you decide to destroy the statues? Why would you do that? You know, etc. We had to that Tsukasa has his reasonings, you know. He says he wants to make a new world free of corruption and purity, you know. And I can understand where Tsukasa is coming from. We all know that Tsukasa had a nasty time when it comes to corruption when he was growing up with, especially when he when he became a fighter, you know. Like that time at the beach when he was a little kid trying to get something for his little sister. He got beaten up by some f'd up, effed up guy. And then, you know, when he, when he continues to fight, you know, I'm pretty sure he must have dealt with a lot of other people as well. And we had to it that Tsukasa mentioned, like, there's no guarantee there'll be unlimited revival fluids, you know, and that it's still. I want to make a new world like um that could be like um that could be good, you know, etc. You know, free from tyranny, from corruption, etc. So there was like like if you were born in a stone world where there was no almost no one else, and you learned that there was revival fluid, right? What would you do exactly? He even asked Ukyo this question. He even knows that Sukasa mentioned like. There's a certain there's that in a primitive a primitive world can't sustain a large number of people. It's almost impossible, and I could see him becoming a realist in the scene. You know, and that's why he's like trying to play the situation, playing you know ruler or a god. You know, and there's no guarantee that there will be unlimited revival fluid. So you only have you only have a certain amount you have. You know, even when he asked Ukyo what you have, what would you have done? And Ukyo really struggled about this because. Etc. And of course, Tsukasa does mention it's necessary that to pick to pick and choose lives, you know, and that's a terrifying thing to do, and it's very dangerous. It's a sinful task to play the duty of God, but I decided to carry that sin, you know, and to make it an opportunity to build a new world that could be great and free of corruption and contamination, I guess. And then he says that his goals haven't changed and nor will they in the future. Which is why he mentions to Senku like, um, this is why, this is no more, this, that's why Senku, this is more, this is no more than the truce. And Senku understands that and he agrees to that, you know. 
And we have two that they end up having to look into certain locations where they need to dig up a lot of people. But Senku says, hey, we can use this dynamite here and there. And they go, you're going to blow people up to hell, man. And they go, like, oh, don't worry. We have someone who can, like, like um, puzzle them back together, you know, glue them back all together, etc. And, and, <laughs> and we see, like, freaking, like, um, Yuzuriha is like, uh, hello, do you know who you're talking to who has to do all that hellish work here and there? Although I understand Senku being a freaking jokester and a scummy guy, you know, but he's a good guy at the heart. And we had to it that they end up using dynamite to blow up a lot of things and trying to look for Tsukasa's little sister and many more. And we see to it Tsukasa found his little sister, you know, which is a good, good thing. And he ends up smiling saying, hey, Mirai, what's up? And I'm like, oh my gosh, this is like the moment of truth right now, you know, etc. So, pretty much like, um, we have to it that like, um, there's a chance to revive like um, Tsukasa's little sister here and there, you know, etc. And then we get to see the next episode, it's going to be called Humanity's Strongest Tag Team, you know, etc. <coughs> so, <coughs> forgive me, if my um throat is a little like clogged up, forgive me, um. So, the war between Senku and Tsukasa ends, and it comes at a truce or a negotiation, you know? Senku believes that if we could heal, revive your sister, let's just do it that way. And I can see where Tsukasa, Senku's coming from, and Tsukasa agrees because he knows Senku's not a guy who lies, and Senku promises that. He's not the kind of guy who's going to lie about that, you know? So, pretty much, you know, after... A brief big struggle against Hyoga and Tsukasa, you know. You know, nitroglycerin, decided to do some research. Yeah, it's no joke. That mother is a dangerous weapon and guaranteed Senku's not the kind of guy to want to kill people. But he ends up wanting to negotiate, you know. So, yeah, pretty much we know about Tsukasa down the line too. And why he's doing what he's doing, you know. There's no guarantee you could have unlimited revival fluid. And even if that's the case, yeah. It's like saying you have a... Big amount of water throughout the world, but sooner or later it's gonna drain eventually, or it's gonna be contaminated, unable to be drank anymore. So, yeah, we see Sukasa as a good guy, but at the same time a realist, and he wants to pick and choose people who could be good for the new world, you know, and not filled with corruption and contamination as it always was, because of what it is today. So, we get to know Sukasa's reasoning here and there, but at the same time we get to know about him down the line and why he became what he is today, you know. Why he fought so hard, why he became so strong, why is he nicknamed the strongest primate in high school. So yeah, pretty much like um, Tsukasa trained his whole life as a young boy to become a fighter so he can make money just to like him save his little sister, you know, because that's what he's only able to do. And I thought it was pretty nice and slick to see that, you know, and I'm very happy to see Tsukasa as a good guy. But at the same time though, he still wants to pick and choose people in the new world that's like good, you know. So they're pretty much in a truce right now, but... What happens when that truce is over? Obviously, it's going to be like all-out war here and there. But, yeah. As for Hyoga, you know, that guy I'm concerned about. I mean, it's bad enough that it was like someone hinted in the opening about his menacing smile here and there. But I'm still scared and concerned about what else is considered. But, anyways, looking forward to the next episode. It's called Humanity's Strongest Tag Team. Um, this might be including Senku and Tsukasa themselves and... Hopefully th something good will happen. Looking forward to the next episode. Hope to see you guys there. Until then, I'm Alpha Zero. Have a good day. And I'll see you guys next time. Alright? Peace out. Bye-bye.